Okay, let's talk about box and whisker plots. So uh, this can be kind of confusing for a lot of students. It's not that difficult, but I'm going to need you to stick with me uh, through the duration of this video if you really want to understand it. But we're going to try to go as quick as we can. Uh, before we get started, uh, if you're a math student, I assume you are if you're checking this video out, um, hope you consider subscribing to my channel. I offer literally hundreds of math videos. So if you like my teaching style, you're going to find a lot on my channel. If you subscribe, make sure you hit that bell notification. Then lastly, if you're looking for something even more intensive than my YouTube videos, I, I offer full and comprehensive um, math courses. So I'll leave a link in, um, in the description of this video uh, that you, you can go ahead and check out my various math courses if you're interested for additional instruction. Okay, so let's get into the box and whisker uh, plot. Now, <clears throat> if you just look at the name here, we have a box and then we have some whiskers. Very much like a, like a cat, right, having whiskers here. We've got a little cat here and it's got little whiskers. We should give a little mouth and some ears, right? So these would be like the whiskers. And then we have a, a box. <clears throat> so I um, have right here just a basic sense of what a box and whisker plot looks like. So we have a box and we have some points on it. And so our final product here is gonna look something like this, okay? Now, mind you, the shape of the box and the whiskers, which are these little parts right here. So this is our whisker, whiskers, and then this would be our box, right? So we have some points in, in there that are going to construct this. <clears throat> so this is generally what this is, but this means nothing to us right now. You're looking at it and we're like, okay, what does it even mean? What am I even dealing with this for? Well, I got to stick with me. It's not difficult. Now, <clears throat> what a uh, box and whisker plot does for us, it's a way to examine data, okay? There's a lot of ways you can look at information, data, and before I even get going, let's talk about these numbers here so we can put this in more context. If you hear my voice a little bit raspy, I am fighting a little bit of a, a cold, so, <clears throat> but I'm not going to let that uh, stop me teaching, so stick with me. Okay, so... Let's say these uh, numbers here, 7, 9, 10, 12, 13, so forth, right? Uh, 16, 20, 22, 75, 76. Let's say this is the age of uh, some people in a room. Okay, so we've got a room here. We've got some folks inside of there, and this would be their respective age. So if you just look at that at first glance, it looks like, hmm, you know, the majority of people are younger, teenagers, you know, that type of thing. So... But we do have two older people. So just by looking at this data set, you could just, you know, get a feel for uh, the age of the people in this room. Mostly younger, but a two, uh, two older folks. So <clears throat> a box and whisker plot is a way to explore data. So just by, now this is not too much information, but if you had a lot of information, a lot of uh, data, you, we need visual representations of it. So the box and whisker plot is an excellent way to explore uh, and analyze uh, data visually. <clears throat> now, what does uh, uh, what does this box and whisker? How does it break down? Okay, so we're going to use this. We're going to construct a box and whisker plot from this information here. So, just stick with me here, and we'll uh, we'll start that process in a second. So, let's talk about what uh, how we're going to construct this okay there's basically five critical points that we need to uh, determine okay to get a box and w a whisker plot okay the first is going to be what we call the lower extreme that's going to be the lowest value in the data set so here it's the youngest person that's seven okay here this will be the upper extreme that's the highest value in a data set. So this would be 76, right, for the oldest person. Then this middle data right here, this middle point, now it may not be like uh, middle in terms of physically in the middle because it's going to be the, the median, all right? Okay, this is the median. You're going to see how this works out here in a second. Just stick with me. This is the median of all this information, okay, all the data set. So remember the median <clears throat> is the actual middle number. When you order the numbers from uh, lowest to highest, whatever the middle number is, that's the median, okay? Then this guy right here, this point is something called the upper quartile, and this is the lower 
quartile. Now, the upper quartile, okay, is going to be the median of the of the upper half, and the lower quartile is going to be the medium of the lower half. I'm going to explain all, this all in a second, okay? But before we go any further, let's just l learn how to read this uh, box and whisker plot. So what we have is this. We have two whiskers and we have this box, okay? Well, 25% of the people, okay, are going to be, or the data is going to be within this group right here, okay, from this point to this point. The next 25% is going to be right there, okay, in this part of our box. This, the next 25% is going to be in this part of the box, and then 25% of the data is going to be in this whisker, okay? So we have two whiskers. They're both each going to um, um, uh, contain 25% of the data, and then the box, however it's split, is going to be 25 and 25%. Now, we, uh, mind you, the way these uh, the shape of this don't don't think that oh it's 25 percent so therefore this must be equally like you know you got to like measure it out and they're all going to have equal measurements that's not the case at all okay because remember we're looking at data this is just 25 percent not exactly um you know like one fourth like splitting a um you know, and something physically and just like split it up in four equal parts. That's not the case. It's just where, where it's just where the percentage of data is at. So when I construct this, uh, this box, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about exploring it. Okay. All right, let's get into it. I think you'll better understand it when we do this example. All right. So here we have our critical points we have the lower, let's start with the easy ones first. Okay. So we're going to look at the entire data set. Don't look at this bottom portion yet, just follow me here. And the first thing we need to do is find the median. Now the median is, there. I got videos on how to find the median, so go ahead and check those out. Okay, the median is the center um, number. Now here, there's not, um, now by the way, let me just back up. You gotta have the numbers ordered from lowest to highest. Okay, so whatever is actually the middle number Okay, so for example, let's do a real basic prompt. If we had one, two, three, four, five, what is the middle number here? Okay, there, and this is order from lowest to highest. The actual middle is three. Okay, you got two over here and two over there. So that is the median. Now, what if we had the data set one, two, three, four, five, six? So there is no exact middle, okay? Because if I pick three, I'll have three on this side and two on that side. So you have to have, there's a tie between three and four. There's two here and just two there. So you have to average three and four. So the median in that example would be 3.5, okay? So kind of just went off a little bit of a tangent to make sure you understand how to find the median because it is so important for uh, box and whisker uh, plots. Okay, so with that being said here, I have... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, five right here. I have one, two, three, four, five, five right there. And I already kind of, you know, figured the meeting out in advance. So we have to average 15 and 15, and that's pretty easy, right? The average of 15 and 15 is, in fact, 15. That's going to be our median, okay? So we need that point. That's a critical point. Remember, we're looking for five points here. That's what we're going to need to construct our uh, box and uh, whisker plot. Now... The other two points are extremes. So our, our lower extreme is the lowest value, okay, um, in the data set, and that's easy. That's seven, okay. So we got that, and then the highest value in the data set. That's our upper extreme. That's seventy-six. All right. So we got seven, fifteen, and seventy-six. So we need those three points. Now let's go find the quartiles. And this is where students, some you know, they get this part confused. So notice our original data set. We, if the the median kind of broke this uh, into two separate like pieces, right? So you have half the data to the right and half the data to the left of the median. Okay. So the upper and lower quartiles are simply the medians of these guys. Okay. So when you find the median, 
of the fir the bottom half, okay, you're just going to do the same thing, but you're going to find the median of the of the bottom half, which is 10, right? Because that's the middle number. That is, in fact, our lower quartile. Right? Pretty straightforward. So when you just think of it that way, you're not going to get this confused. Now I have the upper half of data. When I find the median of this guy, I'm going to have the upper quartile, which is 22, right? That's the median of this upper half of data. So now I have the lower quartile 10 and the upper quartile 22. Okay, so now we have our critical points and let's go ahead and plot this out. Now, what you do here is you make a uh, number line and you put, um, uh, you make the scale such that it will fit all the, the data points that, that are gonna be, um, that were in your data set. So we gotta make it wide enough, if you will, to be able to fit this. So because our lowest was seven and our highest was 76, I decided to go make mine five right here and then 80, because that'll cover, that'd be wide enough to show all this data. And then I kind of just broke up, I put some, uh, put 40 in the middle and I split that again, 60 and 20. So you just need a general um, scale. Now what we're gonna do is start plotting these points. So let's just go, we'll work our way down this way, okay? So let's start with that lower extreme, that'll be at seven, and this doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna put that right there, let's call that seven. Uh, let's see here, uh, the median is at 15, so maybe we'll say that like that's right about right there, let's say, that's 15. Okay, I have the upper extreme, I have the lower extreme at 7, the median at 15. I have the upper extreme way over here at 76. Okay, so 76. All right, so let's keep going. I have the lower quartile at 10. So let's call that like about right there. And I have the upper quartile at 22. So let's say that's about like right here. Okay, now... Now what we're going to do is con construct our box and, and then our whiskers. So we'll start with the box first. So at these critical points, you basically the median is going to be inside the box. So you draw a box going through the quartiles, just like so. Okay. So the, the width of my rectangle there, my box, is going to be the quartiles. So the median is going to be inside, and now I'm just going to draw a line through the median. Okay. Just like that. Then I'm just going to connect my quartiles to the extremes. And these, this is going to form my whiskers way out there. And remember, the, these things can look all kinds of different ways. And that's it. This is my box and whisker plot. Okay. So what does it mean? Okay. Well, remember, let's use some colors here. 25% of the, of the age in the room is going to be between 7 and 10. Okay, and if you just kind of looked at it, that, that remember this part is 25% of the data. Then we have the next 25% of the data is going to be between 10 and 15. Then you have the next 25% of the data, or the people, in this case is the age, is between 15 and 22. So we have already 75% of the age of people, the bulk, between in that room is going to be between 7 and 22. And then the last 25%, Let's uh, find another color. It's going to be somewhere between 22 and 76. And 76 is the, is the highest value, and 7 is the lowest value. And everybody, you could look at the median, 15, right? 50% of the people are less than 15, and 50% of the people are more than 15. So again, uh, the box and whisker plot is, uh, it's an excellent way to look at data, how it's being distributed, and that is the whole idea. It's just another arsenal to have in your kind of tool bag of, uh, of, of um, exploring data. Other things that would be related to this would be like a stem and leaf plot, histograms, line, line graphs, uh, bar charts, all that. And they just give a different views of this information, but... Knowing the medians and knowing the extremes, it's uh, it's very good. But that's basically it. I probably suggest that you maybe um, go back and maybe watch this video again just to make sure you have it fully down. You can kind of pause it and and break it down. But this seems to give students some 
uh, trouble because they try to rush it and they don't understand w what's going on. So hopefully now you understand why we do this, how to uh, construct it, and what the actual plot means, you know, how to interpret it. All right, so let's wrap up this video. Again, uh, if you're looking for, you know, if you like my, my teaching style and, and you, you want to learn um, additionally from me, check out my, I, get, I do tons of stuff on YouTube all the time. I love it. That's a big passion of mine. So subscribe. Make sure you hit that uh, bell notification. If you want to take my full courses at my Tablet Class Math Academy, just check out the uh, link in the description of the video. And lastly, hey, if you enjoyed the video, wouldn't mind uh, a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. I do get a lot of comments on my videos, which I'm grateful for. It's the way I know how I'm doing and how I can um, uh, better serve you better with some ideas or questions that you might come up with. But with that being said, I wish you all the best and have a great day.